ISO 9001, or ISO 9001, is often referred to simply as the standard, which saves repeated references to ISO 9001. Within the document, the standard refers to itself as this standard, or this international standard. Chapters or sections are referred to as clauses. The actual requirements only begin in Clause 4. Clause 0 is an introduction that briefly describes the process approach adopted by the standard. It takes customer requirements as input and delivers product or services as output for customer satisfaction. There is also an encouragement to use the PDCA or Plan Do Check Act methodology for continual quality improvement. Clause 1 covers scope and exclusions. Clauses 2 and 3 cover terminology. Now take time to do a self-assessment. What does 2008 signify in ISO 9001-2008? In the standard, chapters or sections are referred to as what? What does a process do? What does the four-letter acronym PDCA stand for? In the context of this standard, what is the PDCA methodology to be used for? Pause the presentation here and answer all the assessment questions, then proceed to the next slide to check your answers. Pause and then resume the presentation once you have checked your answers. Clause 4 deals with the requirement for there to be a quality management system, or QMS as it is commonly referred to. 4.1 requires that the QMS be documented and implemented in the form of a system of integrated processes which shall be continually monitored for opportunities to be improved. These processes shall cover all essential organizational functions such as management activities, product or service realization, and the provision of necessary resources to that end. 4.2 deals with documentation requirements. Specifically required are a quality policy, quality objectives, the quality manual describing or referencing documented procedures and records which provide evidence of conformity to QMS and other requirements, and to demonstrate the effective operation of the procedures making up the QMS. Take time to do a self-assessment. What does the acronym QMS stand for? A QMS is a what of integrated processes. QMS documentation includes quality what, quality what, and a quality what. What documentation provides evidence of conformity to QMS and other requirements? Pause the presentation here and answer all the assessment questions. Then proceed to the next slide to check your answers. Pause and then resume the presentation once you have checked your answers. Clause 5 deals with the roles and responsibilities of the organization's most senior level of management. It is not enough for management to be committed to implementing the QMS. 5.1 states that they have to provide evidence of management's commitment to develop, implement, and continually improve the effectiveness of the QMS. 5.2 places, early on in the standard, the need for there to be a focus on customers with a view to continually improving customer satisfaction. Take time to do a self-assessment. 
which level of management is covered by Clause 5. Management shall provide evidence of commitment to continually what? The what of the QMS. What is the purpose of putting focus on customers and their requirements? Pause the presentation here and answer all the assessment questions, then proceed to the next slide to check your answers. Pause and then resume the presentation once you have checked your answers. 5.3 lays out what the quality policy needs to cover in order to be an effective framework for the development of quality objectives for the organization. Quality objectives are then covered in 5.4 under planning. 5.5 requires there to be clear assignment of roles, responsibilities and clarity of authority. In particular there needs to be someone assigned the role of management representative, commonly referred to as the MR. In addition to his or her normal duties and responsibilities, the MR has to see to it that the QMS is implemented effectively and keep top management apprised of its status and any need for improvement. This would be done formally at the management review which is described under 5.6. This is a review of the QMS done by top management at planned intervals for the purpose of ensuring that the implementation of the quality policy and quality objectives through the QMS remain efficient and effective and that any necessary changes take place as required. Take time to do a self-assessment. The quality policy needs to be an effective framework for the development of what? MR is an acronym for what role? The MR does not have to be dedicated exclusively to this role. True or false? The MR reports on the state of the QMS to top management in which forum? Pause the presentation here and answer all the assessment questions. Then proceed to the next slide to check your answers. Pause and then resume the presentation once you have checked your answers. Clause 6 is all about the management of resources. 6.1 is a general statement of why you need resources in relation to a quality management system and enhanced customer satisfaction. QMS requirements for human resources are laid out in 6.2 which describes the organization's responsibility for ensuring competence and training where necessary and ensuring that staff are aware of the relevance and importance of their activities in the bigger picture of the organization's quality objectives. Management responsibility for adequate infrastructure and provision of a work environment for materials and personnel conducive to product conformity are covered in 6.3 and 6.4. Take time to do the last self-assessment in Part 1. What are the three broad categories of resources covered by the requirements of Clause 6, Resource Management? Who is responsible for ensuring competence and training? Pause the presentation here and answer all the assessment questions, then proceed to the next slide to check your answers. Pause and then resume the presentation once you have checked your answers.